Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. So under Dan Campbell, the Dolphins have changed in two major ways. Play selection, they're running the football more. That's been the one thing, physical football running it, and because they're doing that, they're having success. 130 yards a game, rushing six touchdowns with Campbell at the helm of this team. Defense has come alive, too. They only had one sack first four games under Joe Philbin. 19 most in the league since, and what does that mean? The Dolphins stars playing like it. With Indomitian, Sue, and Lamar Miller, you see their numbers, so John, the stars, being able to play like stars goes a little bit of a different change of philosophy. And really what he's done, he's just brought a more spirited, they go out to practice, they do it in a hurry, hour and a half, fast and furious. He's challenged these players to play with great effort and you've seen it translate on the field. And the Dolphins won the toss, they have elected to receive and Jarvis Landry back to return kicks, the guy does it all. It was pouring an hour ago. It's not raining right now. It's supposed to rain during this game, so we will see. And here we go. And Miller, Landry it is, going to take it on out. And a good return. And he's got this wet crowd into it already as J.J. Wilcox on the stop. And we take a look at Ryan Tannehill in his fourth year out of Texas A&M. 15 straight games with a touchdown pass. He's got a long way to go to catch the guy we were talking to on the field earlier, Dan Marino. <laughs> yes, yes, he does. But you know what helps quarterbacks is running the football. You just chronicled the fact that they're running it often. They're running it well. Well, as a result, Ryan Tannehill's production has gone up over the last few weeks. And so the Dolphins have it first. First and 10 of their own 27-yard line. Going to hand off on this one. It is Miller and a good run. There's that running game. It's Lamar Miller. And he's going to pick up 12 and a first down. Now, Kevin, we've been talking about it all week in your study. You realize this guy's the best player that nobody knows about in this league, Lamar Miller. He can do it all. He can run up the middle. He can run in the perimeter. He can catch the football. And then he can go the distance. He's a home run threat. A very good football player that I'm not so sure this nation knows about quite yet. That's Deion Sims, the tight end in motion. They will pitch it to Miller. Good cuts. And a good run again by Miller. Two runs. First one picks up 12. This one's going to pick up nine. And a good start for this run game. And injuries are a factor. We told you in the open about Tony Romo back for the Cowboys. But there are some guys that are out in this one, too. We'll tell you that. After we look at the Dolphins and what they're all about this year. Well, the three and two under Dan Campbell. We know that matchup to watch. We will show it to you in Dominican Sioux and Zach Martin. That is going to be awesome on the line. And in a weird schedule for Miami, five of the last seven games on the schedule here at home. Moving on the line. Looks to be on Dallas. Tannehill's going to keep it and run. And he's got first down pending the penalty. So let's see what the penalty is. It looked like the Cowboys jumped. Jeff Triplett is our referee. Offside defense. The interior line. Fight our penalty results in the first half. And Kevin, two things on that play. First of all, that's what home cooking's all about. Being at home, you can manipulate the snap count. Tannehill does a great job from the shotgun. Did so we also saw him run. He hasn't been doing it a lot this year. Dan Kimball was vocal this week. He wanted to see it more. We see it early. They thought it was set up well against this Cowboy defense. Well, this is a heck of a start for these Dolphins. On the opening drive of the game. Flandry in motion. They like to run him a lot. This time they'll fake him a throw, and the ball is behind Jordan Cameron. And it's incomplete. And, John, you know, this is a guy that was a Pro Bowl player a couple years ago, caught 80 balls, and we asked Dan Campbell about it this week, and I think they want to call his number today. Well, he said we're dying for Jordan to have a breakout game. He has had that game down here as a member of the Dolphins. Bill Lazor, the offensive coordinator, said he had a breakout week of practice. Now he's got to take it to. So if you get it on the field, he's had a little bit of a hamstring issue early in the year, but he's healthy now. Second down and 10, and they'll run it. And a short game on second down. Mentioning the injuries and the things we were talking about with some of the key guys. Well, there's guys back. 
like that man, Sean Lee, the 50 for the Cowboys, but missing Morris Claiborne, the starting quarterback. And then for the Dolphins, they lose a starting tackle in Juwan James, who's been out the last couple of weeks, and Jelani Jenkins, their outside linebacker. So, I mean, that against Philadelphia, they had so many injuries, they were picking linebackers up off the street in their play. When you start seeing a bunch of 40 numbers at linebackers, that's trouble. That's what they were playing with. Uh, third down and eight. get a whistle here. There's confusion on the Cowboys side. Timeout. Yeah. Jeff Triple might cut out, but it's a timeout for the Cowboys. They look a little uh, lost on that snap. But well, they were showing pressure, and from the sidelines, it was obviously apparent that they were not lined up right. The Prude thing, you don't want it to happen, but when you're blitzing, touchdowns can happen when you aren't on your assignment, so the prudent thing to do was call the timeout, and that's what the Cowboys did. John glazed over it, talking about injuries, but for the Cowboys, having Sean Lee back, he was out two weeks with his second concussion of the area. You can't just state enough how good this guy is. He's a game changer for him. He's all over the field. He's out there. He's an emotional leader for this team. He's happy to be back, and he said, I just got to keep my tail out there now. Tannehill with time over the middle, slings it and incompletes. Oh, now we see a catch. I thought that ball was bobbled. But that is going to be called a catch on the field. Well, first of all, really nice protection by the Miami Dolphins offensive line and a great anticipation throw by Ryan Tannehill. That, that ball hit the ground. Let's we'll see if the Cowboys throw the flag. They, they already do. have. I thought it hit the ground on the call, and it did. So Jason Garrett was Rashard Matthews, by the way, the one who caught it or tried to catch it. But we'll look again. Jason Garrett's going to challenge this. And you can see there, but I think this angle's better. Let's watch. See the ball hit the Dallas ground. Dallas is challenging the ruling on the field of the leading catch. That's not even a question. Dallas will have this overturned, I'm sure. We'll take a break. We'll look at it. Back from Miami in a moment. This game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency. There's nothing to hide. We're back. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The pass is incomplete. The ball hit the ground. The receiver did not gain possession of it. It'll be fourth and eight at the 44-yard line. Please put 12-25 back in the game clock. Dallas is hot charged a timeout. Well, there's the explanation by Jeff Triplett, but pretty easy. I mean, now, nowadays, I don't think anyone knows what a catch is, but that one, very clear. The ball can hit the ground, but you have to maintain control throughout the process. He did not. All right, so overturned with that a fourth and eight. They will punt it away. Matt Darr has been terrific this year. We'll punt it away as the rain is now back here in Miami. It was a factor early. It poured here yesterday. They played a team here yesterday, too, a college game. But the field looked in pretty good shape earlier. Here's the punt. Beasley. Dangerous to field the punt. He's going to let it go. A great kick, and it goes out of bounds right around the five-yard line. So Tony Romo will come on the field and have a long way to go. But this is a welcome sight for the Cowboys after seven games where they went 0-7. Here is their leader back. Romo in there for down. Uh, Tony Romo, we talked to him the other night, and he said, look, I've been doing this for 20 years. Throwing the football is not a problem. That took me two days to get used to. What is somewhat of an issue, and he's going to have to get back in the flow, is the situational, the quick thinking, the processing that needs to happen. Look for quick throws early to get Tony Romo in a rhythm. It's raining, picking up steam here, too, in Miami. They go live formation to the Cowboys. Here's McFadden, nowhere. Kelvin Shepard on the hit, maybe a half a yard. McFadden, by the way, is questionable today. He had tweaked his groin muscle in his Wednesday practice and was kind of limited the rest of the week, but he was good to go and cleared, so he is starting. He's a guy, Kevin, as well. No. See him, Dominic and Sue. 
but McFadden has had a history of these soft tissue issues. They bring in Robert Turbin. There's Dominic and Sue. I told you, I, I could have been more impressed with his play. A classic matchup right here between Zach Martin, one of the best guards in football, and Dominic and Sue. Physical, tough player is going to be a great one to watch. Draw. Looking for something up the middle. Not much. It'll be a third and long. So for these Cowboys, coming in at two and seven, the storylines with this team. Well, they're multiple. Can Romo stop this losing skid? I mean, they've been in every game, with the exception of the New England game. They just haven't made the plays late. And then getting Shawnee back from a concussion, a north on defense. Big plays in critical moments. We saw it last week at the game against Tampa Bay. Des Bryant drops a third down, and he would catch 100 out of 101 times. Those are the things the Cowboys have not done in this losing streak. And so we have a third and six on their opening series. And movement. False start. Offense number 71. After this, see Lyle Collins, Still the left down. guard, the rookie. Romo not happy. Third and six, very doable. Third and 11, 12. Now that gets tough. So Lou Anna Romo, the new defensive coordinator for the Miami Dolphins. At my Stanford math there. <laughs> Lou Anarumo said, I'm expecting screens early. They don't want Romo getting hurt. Look for the offense, looking for the screen. Here comes the wind in the heavy rain. Third and ten. And we get another whistle. This play is blown dead. You can see hear the raindrops. That's how hard it's raining. You could hear that in your television. We'll discuss what this penalty is. And I'm sure Romo's saying, geez, Tannehill, you get sunny skies. <laughs> I have to come face this for coming back from a collarbone and torrential downpour. Now, interesting, we had a conversation with Dan Marino on the field before and asked him about playing in the rain. And he brought up something I didn't even think of. He, he talked about... There is no foul on the play. The play clock was starting was did not started in era early. Well, what it does, it gives a couple of guys a chance to dry their hands. But John, he talked about the simple things, things like taking the snap become very hard. Yeah, he said typically where your eyes are really downfield, now you got to really focus on catching it. So it's the little things that Dan thought was the tough art of playing in this type of weather. Third down and ten, backed up on their own end zone. Clocks at three. Pressure. Romo in trouble. Shovels it to McFadden. What a play. McFadden is going to be, I believe, a hair shy of a first down. But somehow, Romo avoids a safety. <laughs> How about Romo? He's out for eight weeks. And let's just start off your first throw with a little left-hander. <laughs> he spins out, does a tremendous job of eluding the safety. With his left hand, pushes it out to Darren McFadden. That's Tony Romo, Houdini back there. That was unbelievable. <laughs> Chris Jones punted away. And it's going to sail out of bounds right around the 45-yard line. So the Dolphins will have it for the second time. They'll have good field position. We're scoreless. First quarter in Miami. Today's game is sponsored by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. One second, it's pouring here, then the sun comes out. Welcome to South Florida. So it was pouring on the Cowboys series, and then the Dolphins have the ball, and it's out. Have it nice and sunny. Good <laughs> that, conditions for us. That's home cooking. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have started off slow. Yeah, you see the first quarter for Miami. It's been worst in the league. We're trying to change that today. Bill Lazor, their offensive coordinator, his second year here. Again, things have picked up, and they've run the ball better. They did on that first series when we were having the corner away. Going to get Landry involved here on the quick hitter, and Landry is up near the 49-yard line. Game break time. Let's say hello to Kurt Menefee. Well, hello there, Kevin Burkhart. 
Stay for the Mark Sanchez and touchdown passes. He hooks up with Josh Huff for Sanchez getting the start for the injured Sam Bradford. And already he's got the Eagles 7 0 over Tampa. Kurt, thanks. So the Eagles off and running with Sanchez. A lot of backups playing this week. Obviously, Peyton Manning out. That's the big story. With Osweiler starting. Second and seven. Tannehill on the keeper. Good couple of blocks. And then he's upended Barry Church across midfield. So a third and five. Remember, Tannehill, he's plenty athlete. Yeah. He is very athletic. He was a wide receiver at Texas A&M at first. He's talking about running the football and why he hasn't been doing it more. He said, we frankly, we've played a lot of 3-4 teams. It doesn't set up really well. The Cowboys being a 4-3 team, they thought there was some yards to be had. They were going to do it more, and they're showing that early. I thought he had that set up for a big game, but Barry Church blew right by Alex Thomas. And so now a third and five. You see on third down, Tannehill has really improved the last five games. Pressure. And an air and out. Going to link it deep. Landry! And he can't make the catch. He had it, couldn't bring it down to the ground. Brandon Carr on the coverage. Well, frankly, Jarvis Landry, he did a great job creating separation. They had a little traffic there. If Tannehill eats him, that may be a touchdown. Instead, it's an incompletion. It's a ball that should be caught by Landry. Tannehill could have sure helped the situation by putting it out there in front of him. And so Matt Darr will punt it away again. To the Dolphins' waist field position. Low line drive kick, Beasley let it go, it bounces into the end zone. So that's not what they wanted. The Cowboys will have their second position in much better field position. Tony Romo says, yeah, can the rain stay away? It's Romo back on the field, second series, when we're back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. Buy Pizza Hut's Triple Treat Box, make any night a holiday. And by T-Mobile, ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. First series for Tony Romo was in a monsoon and he completed a left-handed pass. This one a lot better starting in the own 20. Schools in the first quarter here in Miami they get to make fat. And he goes nowhere. We go back to week two, Tony Romo, when he got hurt for the second time in his career, fracturing that left collarbone. It was Jordan Hicks, the rookie the linebacker. See, just kind of fell on him there. Cowboys won that game, and then they hadn't won since. So Romo back today, and how would he take the hits today? And there's Olivier Vernon on that first series. Like, just get that first one out of the way. We learned on the um, the pregame with the guys. Stop, drop, and roll. Tony's <laughs> learned that fall, TB. <laughs> <laughs> Howie and TV talking about how to take a fall. Romo, a lot of that. Witten makes a catch. Somehow split defenders, and Jason Wizen Witten has it for a first down. If you want to understand what chemistry means on a football field, watch these two play together. Over the years, they've developed such a chemistry. They've always had it, but it's trust as well. Tony Romo trusts Jason Witten that if he throws it in tight windows like that, 82's coming out of there with it because he's done it so many times. So there is Witten, seven away from a little history for the Cowboys. 1,000 sections. McFadden again, trying to get him going. And he's got four. Let's go down to the sidelines with Peter Schrager. You know, Tony Romo came into this game and everyone's wondering, what was he going to wear to protect that collarbone? It turns out it's not much. They put some lining on his t-shirt. Not his jersey, not his equipment, but his t-shirt, which is a double XL that he wears under the jersey, and it's just on his left side, protecting the part that got broken. His right side is completely fine. That's his throwing arm. He wants to be mobile. What did he say to us yesterday about that? He said, he said, I, yeah, I told the guys, oh, this will save me for sure. <laughs> I got an endemic and sue on I me. Mean, that Kevlar pad's going to help me. <laughs> There's Sue, second down. Romo has time. Looking for Beasley and the short jacket in the throw, incomplete. Kevin, we talked about the battle between Zach Martin right here and Adamic and Sue. Watch the brutality, the brute force that these guys play with. It's going to be classic because you're talking about two of the best at their position, two of the strongest. The stalemate right there, but we'll watch that throughout the day, and that will be 
fun to watch. That's McFadden lined up now as a wide receiver. Third and six. Four-man rush. Romo delivers. This is right around the marker. The initial marking looks short from upstairs. It was Gavin Escobar on the catch. Well, let's see what spot. That's the important call here. Looks to be a little short. With a the swing they will measure. And this is intriguing. If it is an each short. I think Jason Garrett wants a measurement. He asked it for the measurement. But he did not hesitate to send his offense in. And they are going to get some measurement. They bring on the extra lineman. And the measurements will give Garrett a chance to think. Let's watch. I thought initially when he caught it, he was a little short. It's a good spot. Yeah. Just short. Remember, that's not an official line or yellow line, but just short of the line to gain, and that's exactly where they marked it. But you see it's not much. So Garrett initially sent Charles Brown an extra tackle onto the field. I mean, it's a football and a half with the indication they were going to go. Let's see if he sticks with that. Well, I, you know, I think Jason Garrett, he understands it. Two and 17, he's got nothing to lose. Yeah. you got to play to win. But I would also not be surprised. Tony Romo, one of the better hard counters in this league, if he gets up there and tries to draw the Miami Dolphins off sides. If you're the Dolphins, watch the football. Don't tip. Don't fall off the banana in the tailpipe, so to speak, with Tony Romo's hard count. Uh, last we saw fourth down with Tony Romo and Jason Witten, who was in the past game against the Lions last year, led him to a game-winning score. And the sun comes out, and it's a fourth and one and a big play early from Miami. Jason Garrett is thinking had to go something like this. I've got the best offensive line in football. I'm going to use it. You watch the surge in that left side. You get the movement. That's exactly what you want. Darren McFadden's a guy. If you just give him a little crack, he'll find and he'll hit it. And that's exactly what Jason Garrett was hoping for, and they got it. Yeah, baby is right. <laughs> So a little momentum for this Cowboys offense. Seven play the drive coming up. King Whitehead comes in the game as a wide receiver now, the rookie. That's him in motion. But they'll run it. Do McFadden, left side. And he's made some resistance in the running game early. He's going to pick up three. Another game break. Let's check back in with Kurt. And another touchdown in the Washington Carolina game with Panthers up 7 0. Kirk Cousins finds a wide open to Sean Jackson. 56 yards scored. Jackson's first touchdown of the season. He's been battling injuries. He had seven in the first. Kevin, John, and Peter. Kurt, thanks. Kirk Cousins coming off a 324 yard four touchdown game last week. He's hot. He is. Sean Jackson's like that hamstring all right. The explosive that he brings. Fake to McFadden. Romo all day firing behind Des Bryant. So he had Brian on the hook, but Romo just missed him. It'll be a third down. Now, Tony said, look, I haven't played in eight weeks. There's going to be some adjustments. I'm going to miss some. He did talk about the weather. He said, look, the rain, not a big deal. If it's a torrential, your percentage goes down. If you're normally 72%, you'll probably be about 55%. If it's slightly raining, you're down to about 65%. Discombobulation on the field. We get a whistle and we get a timeout. Miami needed it, so they caught. Dolphins call a timeout on third down for the Cowboys. Still scoreless in the first quarter. Jason Garrett on the left. Dan Campbell, six games into his head coaching career on the right. Youngest coach in the league at age 39. Probably could also beat up any other coach in the National <laughs> Football League. <laughs> third seven there's no probably in that <laughs> a 
They're showing pressure. Romo so active at the line of scrimmage. This is something we have not seen with Brandon Whedon or Matt Castle. He'll get them in the right play. As is now, it's a four-man rush coming near Zion. And he has got the completion. He hooks up with Dez Bryant. And it's a first down for the Cowboys. A great example of Tony Romo. We'll get him in the right play and he'll get him the right protection. They show the blitz, they back out, but Tony Romo finds Des Bryant. Des Bryant will be covered by Brent Grimes throughout the day. They're going to follow him, so that's a matchup to watch as well. On first down, now from the 37, it is McFadden. It outside and does good run by Darren McFadden. Like there was nothing there initially, but he's going to pick up about six. This is actually a bust. You watch Lyle Collins pulling when the when the play was going the other way, a bust. But McFadden, with his speed, takes advantage of the younger Miami linebackers and just beats them to the edge. Little stutter and the speed that Darren McFadden possesses finds positive yards on a busted play. McFadden couldn't get going last week, but Tampa Bay loaded up the box. He had 17 carries for 32 yards. Seven carries, 21 yards early going. Fake. Romo knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think it was Jordan Phillips, the rookie. He got his hands on. The Dolphins took him with a second round pick. There he is. And another third down. A third down and four coming up. Talk about something that suffered without Tony Romo. It's third down. Last year, 47 for second in the NFL. This year, just 37th. About middle of the pack, 17th. So they expect to be better in these situations with Tony Romo at the helm. Five wide for Dallas on a third and four. Pressure. Romo gets rid of it. He's got complete. And a first down. It is Escobar again. The tight end over the middle for gain of 15. Well, one of the things you notice with Tony Romo is he doesn't discriminate. If you're open, he'll throw it to you. And as a result, he spreads the football a lot more than Matt Castle, who was just learning the playbook. He was looking to his stars. Tony Romo will get guys like Escobar. Terrence Williams is another guy who went quiet. And you see Dominican Sue just letting Tony know that he's there. Two. Cowboys have Devin Street in the game, top of your screen. Des Bryant on bottom. By Bryant, so fake the run. Romo going end zone. Incomplete. What an effort. Again, looking for Escobar, and just missed. That was a tremendous play action fake by Romo, and the throw just out of the outstretched arms of Gavin Escobar. He has it in his hands, but can't bring it in. The hit by Ale Vernon, but that play action, Philly had great success with the play action with the younger linebackers in there. Dallas looking to take advantage of it early. Vernon is getting the sacks, John, but he had six quarterback hits last week. He's already got two today, number 50 on Miami. A spinning draw in McFadden, and he's tripped up inside the 15. Sean Jones, the safety, made the tackle after a five-yard run. Romo is one of those guys, you just see a spinning draw. He sets up like it's pass, reverses out. It's just fun to watch him play. I'm not so sure there's a quarterback other than Manning who's more active at the line of scrimmage. Fun to watch him with all these hand signals. He's a demonstrative player at the quarterback position. Well, you talked about those third downs last year, this year, John. Today, two or four. This is a third down and six. See him up there. He's hiding under the line with hand. Signals. Gonna get him in the right play. Romo to Fred gets decked. That's low. Well, it's intercepted. And it's picked up by Grimes. And we get a flag as Grimes is taken down by McFadden. <laughs> Romo got decked and the throw was short. That's Mammy's football pending the penalty. Tony Romo not happy with Des Bryant. It looks like Des Bryant and Tony Romo on a different page in terms of the route. Romo threw it out there, trusting Des on 
the fade. Instead, Des Bryant broke inside. Romo was not happy. During the return, first foul. Low block. Number 94 on the return team. Half the distance to the goal. First and 10 Miami. You see the route. Romo throws it up, expecting the one-on-one, -on -one, and he likes that. Des Bryant instead goes inside. An obvious miscommunication. Dallas has a nice drop, but they come up short, and Miami takes over. Scoreless, late first quarter. Now the first turnover in the red zone in a long time for the Cowboys. They got some pressure and a little miscommunication, and Grimes, their short corner who was out last week, he had a crazy late bout of food poisoning. Good to have him back for Miami. Scoreless late first quarter, their football backed up around their own 10. They're going to run it. On first down, and that is not going to go anywhere. Jay Ajayi, the rookie, gets there. Well, Lou Anarumo, the defensive coordinator for the Dolphins, said he promised we've got to hit him early. You see the pressure. McFadden does a great job, but you see Romo waiting. He's expecting something else from Des Bryant, but that doesn't absolve him. At some point, you either got to throw the ball away or eat it and kick the field goal. See the pressure up the middle. Romo wait for Des. It never happens at that point. Just eat it. Here's a giant coming near side. There's a flag. It's a good block. First down and more, but a penalty back in the area of the possible hold. So let's see what Triplett says. Holding number 74 in the offense. After this goal, still third down. On Jason Fox playing right tackle the last couple games. Juwan James, their normal starter, injured his toe last couple of weeks. He's out. Jason Fox, the right tackle, very little unbalanced line, and he's working against Greg Hardy. Gets outside the framework of the body that's right in Jeff, Jeff Triplett's view. And when you get outside the framework of the body, they're going to call that 90% of the time. Dolphins backed up on their own five. Second down. Give up the middle. A guy breaks through one tackle, but not much. Going to give him about two and a half yards. Nick Hayden was there first, and that should take us to the end of a scoreless, sometimes soggy first quarter here in Miami. So what's the story? It's Romo, it's the rain, and it's no points after one. Scoreless, Dolphins and Cal. Start of the second quarter from Miami. Dolphins and Cowboys are scoreless. Dolphins have a third and long right here. Third and will call 11. Damian Williams checks in the game at running back, number 34. Tannehill has it locked up. Rolando McCain, Kevin, we talked about it, had his best game of the year last week versus Tampa Bay. Came off the suspension, finally had his legs underneath him. He's a difference maker when healthy. You see him bluff the blitz, and then he's going to come back. Simply read the eyes of Ryan Tannehill. That's easy pickings for Rolando McClain. Ryan Tannehill never sees him. Really a nice job by McClain. Reading the eyes, also reading the route. Rondo McClain with the pick six for the Dallas Cowboys. First pick six of his career. And so all the fanfare of Tony Romo back, and the Cowboys get aboard with their defense. So McClain, who, you know, he, this year just didn't start well for him. It's the first four games because of the substance abuse policy suspended by the league. Delvin couple of injuries it just this wasn't right but I know you feel that last week was his game they of the year. just looked like a different player and I think they're different defense when he, he's such a force he's so long in the middle of that field he's a game changer and so I'd Marinelli the defensive coordinator said look you go back to training camp was injured he had health issues then suspended for four weeks so his legs were not underneath him he was awful a couple weeks ago yeah Tampa he looked like the guy I saw in 2014 and that's a good sign for the Dallas Cowboys. 
Dan Kimball. Now has to see his team try and come from behind, which, by the way, they were last week. They were down 6-3 to three to the Eagles with four and a half minutes ago in the first quarter, and they ended up winning that game. Yeah, you're going to have to draw upon that experience. We, we chronicled that they're slow starters. That's got to change, but knowing that you can just stay the course, come back like they did last week against the Eagles. That's important and gives this team confidence moving forward. The whistle low, so this kick is not out. Not sure why. There is, there is no kick as the officials were not in position for the kickoff. Okay. Here's Jason Garrett. That guy was in position. Well, I know McLean, Jason Garrett, proud of him, happy for him, and got points on the board. I'll tell you one thing. You're around Jason Garrett. He just, he feels like a head coach. He is a leader, and this has not been the easiest time to be a head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. But I thought when he was talking to us yesterday, he said something interesting, and I know the defense just Word, but he said, what does Tony Rowe do coming back? He spreads the burden. And, and, you know, I think what he means by that is that he makes everyone great players. They make everyone around them better. Yeah. People say, how does he affect the defense? It's confidence. It's knowing. I can take a chance because our quarterback can bail me out. It's playing with leads and turnovers happen. You notice they haven't had many turnovers because they've been playing real tight games or from behind. With Romo last year, they played a lot ahead and they're Turnovers came their way. No, that's a great point. They have only four takeaways coming in the last week. They picked off two balls from Jameis Winston and then that. So that started to turn around from a team that was second in the league in getting turnovers last year. Hey, Thanksgiving weekend, we've got some of the best rivalries in college football, including the game of the week on Saturday. Notre Dame takes on Stanford. I don't know, John, I'm, you might be a little interested in that. Must win game for both teams and their playoff hopes. It all starts Thursday on FS. It's going to be heck of a it really will. You talk about physical football, the Stanford Cardinal and Notre Dame have been fantastic with their backup quarterback. They've been fun to watch in at Fenway last night. That was awesome. Dolphins a throw Mitchell at fullback position. They're going to flip it near Stephen Miller. He's got a lot of room to run, and Miller is the first down. So how about that? They had the defensive tackle at fullback that time. Earl Mitchell ends, or what do you do? You fake it to Earl Mitchell. That caused the defense, but this is what you want, Lamar Miller. Watch Lamar Miller at the end, inviting the defender, Jeff Heath, to come his way. <laughs> he wanted to hit. Walter Pay Payton would be proud, not getting out of bounds, calling the guy out and running through him. Lamar Miller, uh, keep feeding him the ball. He's got four yeah, carries for 38 go. yards to start this game. Damian Williams in the game at back will fake to him. Pressure. Tannehill escapes, dumps it to Williams. Flag flies, lead high pursuit. And it's going to be a lot of everything for no game, but another penalty. So maybe Miami goes backwards. So the closing speed of Sean Lee there. Wait for Jeff Triplett to figure this out. He told us, John, even last week, the Cowboys kept him out for the concussion protocol. But he said he felt fine even last Holding week. Holding offense, number 80. 10-yard penalty, still first down. And Kevin, I think that was a smart move. you got to play like that. There's Deion Sims, who the hold was on. Barry Church blitzing at the safety position. They call the hold, but Sean Lee finishing that play. That's what he brings to this team, that sideline to sideline speed and pursuit. That's contagious. That gets everyone running to the football. So after the hole, the first down, 20. Dolphins backed up on their own 26. Miller back in the game. Tannehill on the keeper on the zone read. And a good one, he gets Emma. Jeff Heath came in with a big hit. And now tempers flaring, Jarvis Landry in it with someone. Tannehill looks to be all right. Hey, the crowd didn't like it. The Dolphins didn't like it. But Jeff Heath's doing his job. When you become runner, the runner, Jeff Heath, no helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, maybe dipping his head a little, but we're back one.
wants to run, he becomes a runner and therefore a legal hit by Jimmy. Uh -huh. A big hit for sure. He did gain seven to a second down and 13. Blitz coming. Tannehill backs up and just throws it away. The claim was all over Lamar Miller. Rolando McClain, he continues his good play. Here he is. He diagnoses the screen, and that's what you got to do when you're playing man-to-man. -man. Don't wait. Go get it, because it becomes a voided play at that point. Tannehill has nothing to do but throw it away. Rolando McClain raising his play. That's a big plus for this defense. He was going for Jared Matthews, but he couldn't connect, and the Dolphins will have to punt it away. You see the pressure. Sean Lee comes out. Here comes the nickel. Patman puts the pressure on. Tannehill hung in there well, but just a little bit air in his throw to Matthews. So the Dolphins 0 for 4 on third down today. Been a bugaboo for a lot of the year, even though they've been better of late. Today struggling. Low snap, Dar. This is Whitehead going to field at the 18. Make that the, yeah, uh, so Whitehead. We get a flag on the far side of the field. Gonna hold on one second, there is a penalty. There is McLean with his defense with the interception for a touchdown and that good coverage on that screen. We'll see what this penalty is. Dirty kick, holding, return team number 15. Half the distance to the goal, first down, timeout. All right, so Devin Street, so the Cowboys will back up, but it will be their football, and they're up seven to nothing on these Dolphins as we look at the hold right there. Today's game of Fox is sponsored by Cricket Wireless, the merrier carrier. By Pepsi, the official soft drink of the NFL. And by Citizen Echo Drive, fueled by light, it never needs a battery. Well, the traffic is oh so slow on South Beach. Taking in the weather and the sights, and we're taking it in Duncan Sue facing this great Cowboys offensive line. That matchup to watch. First and ten for Dallas. Left side, he's got a good game. Going to pick up four on first down. There's Sue on the stop. There's Indomitian and Sue right here. This time he's a little zone blocking by the Cowboys. Going to be working again. Doug Free. I got to tell you though, Kevin, my respect level. Last week versus the Philadelphia Eagles, because of the tempo of the Eagles, this defense played 88 plays. They were really 98, 10 penalized. He played 81 of them, and his effort in that game, dominant, but all-out effort on every. 81 of those snaps. It was a incredible game to watch. That really is something. Run it again. McFadden left side and a struggle for a couple of yards. Kevin Shepard, the middle linebacker, makes the call. He hasn't missed a snap yet today. He faces Cowboys offensive line in playoffs last year with the Lions. He is a little familiar. He was a little hesitant. I, I offered to him, yeah, you're going up against the best offensive guard in football. And he said, I think he's one of the best. I'm not ready to give him that yet. <laughs> and he also said that the Cowboys, they like to fish. They like to have your hands on each other. I don't play that game. <laughs> the Dolphins could use him here. Uh, third down and four. Sue lined up inside. A double team here. And Romo, well, this has time going for Brian. And they can't connect today. They've had a hard time. Even though he does have one catch, that time incomplete the Cowboys will punt you know and one of the things that Dan Campbell we showed earlier one sack before Dan Campbell 19 after well part of the reason they've done a great job of stopping the run since Dan Campbell has been head coach that puts them in better third down situations the other thing is they're letting them rush more they were doing more blitz that takes a guy like Sue out of the game you need to let him to tee off and that's what they've been doing of late that is an open Cowboy at the 
bottom of the screen. Now they, they could have thrown it to him for a first down. Low sinking punt. Jarvis Landry has a punt return touchdown here. And he's looking to make a spin move, but defense well by the Cowboys. Up to the 42. 12 yard return. Miami football. Cowboys, though, in the lead. Well, I mean, it feels like he just got done playing. He's only 39. 10 year career. Yeah, he played for the Cowboys for a few years. And there's catching a touchdown Drew Bledsoe. So he was teammates with Witten and with Romo. And later in his career in New York, he was teammates with Jim Garrett. So it is a lot of familiarity here. And he's a, a Texas kid who grew up a Cowboys fan. And his favorite player was Danny White. He's in the building here today calling Cowboys radio. So there's a lot of symmetry with Cable in his sixth game as an NFL head coach. And Hill's going to go quick hitter dropped by Landry. You know, I think with Campbell, it's there's one way of looking. Hey, well, it's easy if the team's having success. Of course, it's a head coach, but there are definitely things he's doing differently. And, and the thing is, with competition, he had this quote that was great, John. He said, "You put people in the position to either rise or be exposed, and you get the best out of them." He had coaches running one-on-one -on -one drills the other day. He just wants to have fun. He says the best teams I've been on have been incredibly tight, but incredibly competitive, and I can. Agree more with him. Here's Miller tries to get the outside. He is run down. Boy, Rolando McClain is having a game. Another terrific play, and it brings up a third down. But watch Rolando McClain, and this is why I say he's in the heart of that defense. When you're strong up the middle, he diagnoses, he sees the pull, and then that sideline to sideline nature. He was not doing that three weeks ago. He's got his legs underneath him, and I keep saying it, but this guy's a difference maker. You have him playing at this level, you have Sean. Lee back now. Mm. Hitchens is playing well. This line, I can call, is back for the Dallas Cowboys. Third down, 11. 0 for 4 on third down today are the Dolphins. Tannehill, all day. Looking, throwing, coming back to make the catch is Cameron. That's not going to be enough for a first down. Cameron had gotten to the sticks, but as the ball was traveling, he did what you're supposed to do, come back, but that left him short of the line. So Miami now 0 for 5 on third down. Four of them have been third and longs. They're not putting themselves in good position here. And they will punt it again. Give credit to Rod Marinelli's defense. You got to earn the right to rush the passer for themselves in those favorable third down situations. The third and longs working out well for the Dow Cowboys. Here's Dar. Led league in gross average coming in at 49 yards. Good high kick. Easily lets it go over his head. Takes a nice Miami bounce. Going to be down just outside the five-yard line. So, Cowboys defense is doing their job today. And now we get to see Tony Romo on the field. 7-0 Cowboys lead it here in the second. This game is sponsored by Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. Sign up now. Well, the sun is out now. It's been for a little while. We had heavy rains earlier and then a little rain in the first quarter. But the big thunderstorms that they had predicted have stayed away so far for a little while. Cowboys up to nothing in the second quarter. They start this possession on their own seven yard line. Robert Turbin and running in the game. Ball is tipped and it's incomplete. There you see Turbin in the game. Jordan Phillips got his hand on that one. Second time today, he's tipped the ball. The line of scrimmage. Jordan Phillips has been part of this front four that's active for the Miami Dolphins. Nice job getting his hands up. Couple sacks this season, which is a good number midway point for the interior line, which is where he plays. It's Terrence Williams in motion. Turbin up the middle. I chuckled when Jason Garrett said, yeah, I talked to Robert, who they signed this week, Tuesday night, late Tuesday, he was in Newark Airport. Wednesday, he's in there doing walkthroughs. And Jason said, looked like he belonged. And so we said, you know what, we're going to play him. The was a little nicked. They needed another bat. They liked Turbin for a long time. This is his first week being here, but running back a little easier than most positions to come in and play. I asked Jason if he wanted to 
place a call to Marshawn Lynch. They've signed like Reese Seattle running backs off the waiver wire just out of coincidence. And he's finally giving Darren McFadden a little bit of a rest. Third down and eight. Delayed blitz. Romo in trouble and he sacks. They get to Romo, Olivier Vernon. Kevin, you mentioned it earlier. Olivier Vernon only has two sacks coming in. He's just going to come off that corner. But he is consistently around the quarterback. Duck free. It's flat out beat with the speed rush. And Tony Romo goes down for the Cowboys. There's a late penalty for side of the Holy field. Defense, number 22. Huge. The five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Cool. What a killer. That's Jamar Taylor. And that negates the sack and them getting the ball back. There he is working against Terrence Williams. It's a tough call. You can't quite see from that angle, but that really hurts as the Dolphins were off the field with the sack. Enormous penalty, which keeps the Dallas drive alive. 8.26 to go in the first half. They'll run it again. Try to get Turbin, the former Seahawk, involved, and he's got himself a nice run. Out across the 21 yard line for a seven yard gain. Really nice patience in the run. Turbin doesn't hit it right away. Stretches it and then gets downhill and finds some positive yards. Seven yards for Turbin on that carry. So a second down and three. McFadden, the thing about him, as good as he's been last month, John, he's been the workers. I mean, he's carried almost every single one so they need someone to give him a little bit of a break Kristen Michael did not work out and they released him for Turbin Seahawk for Seahawk bounces off one tackle but that time is going to be taken down just shy of the first down so remember the Cowboys of course didn't sign Mark Lurie and went to Philadelphia these are all the running backs that put on a Cowboy uniform since camp started that's a lot of running backs John <laughs> it's a lot too many to count and you see they got four running backs with the carry. But I understand the, the price tag was high for DeMarco Murray. But, Kevin, I can't tell you, he was such a good fit. Let the NFL in rushing, and they haven't been the same since they got rid of him. Obviously, Rome has been out, but I think Murray be, not being here is a huge factor. Cowboys go jumbo, extra tackle, bring in the fullback, give it to McFadden, looking for a yard, and he's got it. And he's the first down. So on a couple of those third and shorts, Darren McFadden gets the job done. That was good strong running by Darren McFadden. He's, he's hit short of the line to gain and then runs through. Watch him. A little penetration from Jordan Phillips, but then he runs and carries Jordan Phillips, goes right over Jordan Phillips for the first down. And that'll be a first half. There's that connection we've seen be so productive for the Cowboys. Great anticipation by Romo. Des Bryant does a tremendous job looking that football in and delivering for Tony Romo. So remember, this drive was over with a big holding penalty on Jamar Taylor. And now all of a sudden, the seventh play of the drive for Dallas, which guarded in the shadow of their own end. Turbin again, getting some reps, breaking through, Robert Turbin, and he's knocked out of bounds. That was the last line of defense, it was Grimes who saved the touchdown, but they're getting a big boost from Robert Turbin here. In Newark Airport Tuesday night, running through the Dolphins defense on Sunday, Turbin churning those legs, looking like his old teammate Marshawn Lynch running through the Dolphins defense. For carries, 28 yards for Turbin. He's been effective here. Lucky Whitehead in motion. And they'll fake pressure. Here comes Vernon again, and Rowe goes down. 
Olivier Vernon is getting to the quarterback today. Well, Vernon did it from the right side, beat Doug Free on the holding pin, and he, now he says, let me try the other side, and I'm going to run by arguably the best left tackle in football, Tyron Smith. Olivier Vernon putting on a clinic. Doesn't matter where you line him up, he's getting done. We talk about patience from runners. They're an example of patience from a rusher. Got him with the stutter, then the speed for Olivier Vernon. So, he would have had another sack, but that was made by penalty. He's already had a couple quarterback hits. He has been very effective today. And remember, they're playing without Cameron Wake, their best defensive lineman out for the year with a ruptured Achilles the last couple weeks. Second and 13. It's a four-man pressure. Romo in trouble. Spins away. Stays on his feet. Throws. And I think we have a catch, do we? Yes, we do. Devin Streets going low to make the grab. What a play. <laughs> Tony Rowe, bumbling, stumbling, finding his way out of the pocket, and then eyes downfield, finding Devin Street. He almost falls, legs not quite underneath him, but has the aptitude to keep his eye downfield, and Street right in the catch. Great catch. McFadden now tackled immediately by Rashad Jones, the safety. Well, Rashad Jones, Kevin, he's one of the better safeties in this league. Lou Anna, Anna, Anarumo. Anarumo, the defensive coordinator, <laughs> said lat this week, you show me a better one. I'm not sure if he's the best. I think there's some guys in Seattle that might have an argument there. But he does things at the safety position. He can cover in the basket. He can stop the run as a linebacker, and he can blitz. He does everything very well. Top flight pair in this league. Long drive for Dallas. As winding down to three minutes left in this first half. This is McFadden. Trying to get outside, flag flies from the backfield. It might be on Tyron Smith, who got beat on the sack moments ago. Holding to 77 offense. Can your penalty still second down? Let's have a game break now, checking in with Michael. We've got a wild one going on in Philly. Bucks and Eagles, Darren Sproles gets the little jump pass from Mark Sanchez, and the little man does it all by himself. 35 yards for the score, 21 to 14 bucks. Jameis Winston does have a career high. Three touchdown passes on the first half. Thank you, Kevin. Good job. All right, Mike, thanks. Well, we saw Winston. We met with him last week. It's getting better and better. He is. Second, oh, it's been good for a long time. It <laughs> really is. Second down in 21. Flag flies. So movement. Oh, start. 68 offense. Five yard penalty still. Second down. That's on Doug Free. There's Lou Anarumo. You know, when the Dolphins fired Joe Philbin, and they also they instituted Dan Campbell. Then two days later, he filed Kevin Coyle, the defensive coordinator. And Anarumo was the secondary coach and, and bumped him up. And Anarumo and Coyle were best friends. So it was not the easiest thing to do, but he's done a nice job in these five games. He really has. He's, got, he's simplified. He's pulled back. Less is more type of attitude, and it's worked. They're playing better football on the defensive side of all. Second and 26 helps when you're a defensive go, go. coordinator. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. Snap comes late. That'll be the two-minute warning. Oh, boy, is on the move. Up seven. Get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. So, two minutes to go in the first half. Seven-nothing Cowboys. Tony Romo in his return. Some good, some bad. Seven of 14, 84 yards, and a touchdown. The Cowboys' score, though, came off of Rolando McClain. Exception return for a score. How about this, though? For Miami on offense... Ryan Tannehill, 2 of 9 for 12 yards. This Dallas defense has been good. We talked so much about this Dallas defense starting to show signs of life. What they have to do now is finish. And you see, talking about defense under Lou Anarumo, no. this pass rush has come alive for the Miami Dolphins. They've got one sack to a four today. And this is a second and 27. Williams 
for a grab. He's going to pick some that back and get back near the original line of scrimmage down to the 31. And Terrence Woods is a guy that's completely disappeared from this Cowboy offense. He had nine catches in his first two games with Tony Romo. He's at 25 now, but he just hasn't been a constant presence. Jason Garrett talked about why he's so critical. Des Bryant gets a lot of attention. Jason Witten get a lot of attention. Cole Beasley does at times. He's one-on-one. -on -one. You can make him pay. Just a 17th catch in the last eight games. The guy was a big-time player, but maybe Romo gets him back involved. Play clock four. Third and ten. Pressure picked up by McFadden. Romo coming near for Williams. He's got it. He's involved now. Touchdown. Terrence Williams. I promise you he's happy to have Tony Romo back. He's working against Jamar Taylor. One-on-one -on -one coverage, the other corner. Bryce McCain tries to come over late. A well-thrown ball by Romo, and that's what you have to do. High point the ball as a wide receiver. Terrence Williams does it beautifully. It's a 31-yard hookup from Romo to Williamson. That'll get involved. His third touchdown of the year. That's a big score as the Cowboys. After the touchdowns, first for like conduct. Number 88 and 83 from Dallas. That 15-year penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That could be, could be an interesting penalty on the kickoff. I mean, with Miami with two timeouts left, that could give them some decent field position. Absolutely. Those things hurt, but more so they're the Dallas Cowboys just thrilled to have Tony Romo back because of the possibilities. Those type things, those big plays is what this offense has been lacking without Romo. And now they found it by way of Romo to Terrence Williams. Um, you talked about the big play coming into today. They had 21 passes of 20 yards or more. That was worse than the league. Extra point is up, and it is good. The first offensive touchdown for the Cowboys in seven quarters. It's been a while, but Dallas up 14-0 in Miami. Well, they called the penalty, and I think, John, by looking at this tape, it's for taunting. And I don't think it's there. I think it's at the end of this as Des Bryant and Williams were walking on. I think they're, I think, trash. I don't know. We're guessing. It's conjecture. Uh, yeah, that's something Mike Pereira sends notes every week. Last week, he said when the, the league was going to emphasize taunting. They did not. They felt like it was happening too much. And looks like they got the Cowboys but, there. But look at this short kick. And Miami has two timeouts here, and they're going to have Unbelievable field position up at the 47. Zach Vigil, the linebacker, is the guy that picked it up. They've got a minute two to go and two timeouts. Plenty of times. That's a huge penalty. And remember, the Cowboys' problem has been finishing. That's finishing games. It's finishing halves. You have to finish. Penalties like that, beating yourself to short kickoff. Now, listen, Miami, plenty of time to put points on the board. Well, as you can see, Tannehill has not had a good first half. But he's got to look a minute two to make amends here. The official mark the ball at the 46. Three man rush. Can't hit all over the middle, and that is going to go nowhere. Landry made the catch. Now a flag comes from the other side of the field. He's got two yards. The clock will stop with 55 seconds left to sort out this penalty. Illegal formation. Offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Number 74 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, still first down. This Cowboys defense is flying today, John. That man right there, Rod Marinelli. I got to tell you, one of the finest coaches I've ever been around. He was a defensive line coach in Tampa. Hasn't had the results this year, but Kevin, you know him positive. Positive. He thinks it's coming. He really yeah. believes this defense is a good defense. For sure with the way they're playing today. First and 15. Tannehill stands in, going deep for side. Lindsay, that's a great catch, matched up against Aaron Jones. And he's going to be tackled inside the 15. Byron, Byron Jones in for Morris Claiborne. He's been asked a lot 
as a rookie. A lot has passed of him. He's played free safety, he's strong safety. Nickelback now at the corner, and he finds out what life on that island is like in the NFL. 47-yard game. Tannehill far side incomplete. Looking for George Cameron. It was J.J. Wilcox on D. But 23 seconds left. Obviously in field goal range. Timeout, so they can do whatever they want here. Absolutely. And I think you got to be aggressive. I, three points would be nice, but you want to score seven. I think you got to take some shots at the end zone. It's where Jordan Cameron could be a big part of what you want to do. Now, they didn't call a timeout after that. It took a while for the team to run down the field. But, you know, now they have two timeouts so they could run any play they want these next two and still get a field goal if they don't get it. Second down. Tannehill pressure. Rolls. Looking. Firing. Caught! The tight end, Cameron. Touchdown. And the Dolphins are right back in it. Set up by that taunting penalty. Yeah. Short kickoff and set this up. Danny Hill doing a nice job of extending the play. Nothing there right away. Gets outside of the pocket, eyes downfield. This is where tight ends, those big bodies, they're easy to see for quarterbacks. When things break down, now you got to uncover. That's exactly what Cameron does. It's a good adjustment to a ball thrown behind him. Really nice drive by the Dolphins to put points on at the end of the half. Credit John Tannehill had 12 yards to that point. He had a couple great throws on that drive. And the Dolphins back in it. 14-7 Cowboys now with 16 seconds ago in the half. We got a game in Miami. The sun's out. It's a party. Why not? Cameron the tight end, his second of the year. You know, those critical plays for the Cowboys, yeah, they've been without Tony Rowan, but they haven't made it. And here, John, it's a mistake. They go up 14-0. They're dominating the game. A taunting penalty on Dez Bryant after the touchdown. A bad squib kick by Dan Bailey. And a nice play by the Dolphins to recover there. And then, boom, Tannehill a couple good throws, and you got a game. We talked about it. It's about fishing. And that's what the Cowboys team has failed to do. We'll see if he can here today. This kick out of the back of the end zone. Why don't we check in with Kurt Menefee? Coming up on the Visa halftime, it's back of day. Rock gets the go as a Bronco. Case Keenum is in for the Rams. Matt Hasselbeck is back for the Colts. Sanchez looks to make his mark in Philly, and Yates tries to bust out of the gates early. And let's not forget the guys who back me up. Oh, we say that one well, right? <laughs> Terry looks frustrated. <laughs> you know, he don't call Terry Bradshaw. That's right, he's frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. Well, we will see those guys from L.A. in moments now as that'll take us to the end of the first half, and it should make for an interesting second half. Late touchdown by the Dolphins, but it's the Cowboys behind Tony Romo with a 14-7 lead at the break here from Miami. So when Romo's return, he started off a little rusty, then led a long touchdown drive with a 31-yard score to Terrence Woods. And this Dallas defense was just dominant. Ryan Tannehill made a heck of a throw, and then Jarvis Landry with a big time catch, and just like that, quick strike, Miami's back in. Yeah, Romo a little rusty. It wasn't perfect, but that's to be expected. At the end, we saw what he brings to this team. All right, let's go to Kurt and Terry and Howie. Mike go in Jimmy. Halftime show, Visa, comes your way right now. His excitement brought to you by Nissan. Well, it's had a little of everything right here in South Florida where the sun's been out, the rain has been out. Oh, yeah. Monsoon in the pregame and early in this one. We had some turnovers. We had a left-handed pass by Tony Romo, a defensive touchdown, and then the Dolphins getting back in it before the half. That was his excitement brought to you by Nissan. Woo! Catch your breath as we get set for a second half in Miami. Des Bryant riding the bike to stay warm. 14-7 Cowboys who will get the ball to start this third quarter. Yeah, there's a lot been happening here, but the big storyline is the return of Tony Romo. His team up in front by seven. What do you think so far? Well, it wasn't perfect. Again, we saw again, though, what he brings to this team, and that's big playability. Ryan Tannehill perhaps got woken up on that last drive. So Cowboys will start with the football, kicked out of the end zone, and they'll start it on their own 20 with Romo 
coming out. 9 of 16, 132 yards with interception and the touchdown so far. Some of the first half numbers for you. Well, the Dolphins had new numbers until the very end, that last drive. Tannehill hit a deep ball to Landry and then a 12-yard touchdown to Jordan Cameron. Well, there's been pressure on Tony Romo today. He's gotten sacked once. Another sack negated by Pendleton. He's been hit and hurried seven times. So the Dolphins getting some pressure. A lot of times with a four-man line. On first down, they're going to run it. Trying to get Darren McFadden going. So let's watch Tony Romo. First series was in a downpour up near his own end zone. His first completion was a left-handed pass. But, uh, yeah, he took a couple hits early and looked like he was starting to get in a groove as this game moved on. Well, it's Tony talked to us about the other night was that he takes a lot of pride and he thinks it's something he really improved that when you get hit early in the game, a lot of quarterbacks go away. He said, I take pride in not being that guy. If I get hit early, I still have poise and I can play right through it. Second down and seven. Fat and right. Good. Oh, Darren McFadden runs right through it and he's out across the 40. He had a gaping hole to run through that time, and he picked up 20 yards. Well, first of all, when you're running this gap type scheme, Lyle Collins, the rookie, Zach Martin, went to do a great job. And then look at Lyle Collins, the athleticism to get out there one-on-one, -on -one, make that block. Darren McFadden with that kind of speed, if you give him that opening, he'll, he'll put big yards on the board. It's Terrence Williams and more active today than he has in the last eight weeks. Touchdown already in his third catch. And watch this route at the top of the route. He sells it that he's going deep. Martin Taylor goes right down on the ground. That's tremendous route. A lot to it. And Tony Romo, Kevin, you talked about it. Terrence Williams probably as happy as anyone because he seems to come alive. Tony Romo trusts him and he likes that. Cowboys on the move, this opening possession of the third quarter. Running again, and he runs right into a brick wall named Ndamin Sue. Goodness. There's no subtlety to anything Ndamin Sue does. You watch him, and this is how you play defensive line. A little stuff before the play ever happens. He beats the best football and guard and best guard in football in my mind. And Dominic can sue playing at a high, high level the last couple of weeks. I wouldn't want to make him angry. <laughs> Very strong human being. Lot of four. Robert Turbin in the game now at running back. Play clock at three. Blitz. Picked up initially. Roll. Gets it, and it's intercepted. It's picked off by Neville Hewitt, and we get a penalty, too. So an interception by Miami. They're second, but let's see what the penalty is. The rookie free agent, Adam Marshall, getting the start today with Jelani Jenkins hurt. Miami clapping. Cody, offense number 77. That privilege declined. He's over the place. First down. So, a big impact from the rookie. Romo pressured again. Throws it away. And the Dolphins down by seven. Have a football here in the third. Day game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest. Trans Fancy. Low fares. Nothing to hide. By Burger King. Now get ten chicken nuggets for $1.49. Only at BK. And by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. Tony Romo told us himself the thing he was concerned about after eight weeks away from the game, situational thinking, the quick decisions, right there is a bad decision. Terry Bradshaw talked about it. He played the position. He was going to be nervous in the pocket. That's nervous in that pocket. Not a good decision. Eight weeks away from the game takes a toll on even elite quarterback like Tony Romo. And Tannehill to throw on first down. He's got a complete and it's Matthew who makes the catch. And he's got a first down, a gain of 15. You know, Tannehill, Johnny, had 12 yards until the last minute of the half, but he's starting to heat up now. 
He's heating up, as is the tempo for the Miami Dolphins. They feel the rhythm starting to happen on the field, and they want to continue it. Boss Miller left breaks through. Flag coming in very late. So let's get this call. This one may be coming on back. Brandon Albert threw his hands up in the air. The left tackle. Michael foul. Chop block. Number 51 of the offense. 15-year penalty. Still first down. That's Mike Pouncey, their Pro Bowl center. Well, Pouncey is brilliant at pulling. And there, there's the problem. When someone's high and then you go low, as Pouncey did. And it's not something intentional to Pouncey. It happened very fast. But that was a good call because you can't be engaged high while someone else goes mm. low. Part of the safety 50, 50. protocol in the go, go, go. NFL. 15 yards, and that hurts. First and 25 now. Backed up around 43. And another whistle. And 12 penalties in this game already. Might as well make it another. Fault start. Number 84 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Jordan Cameron, the tight end. Dan Campbell's thinking, man. Dolphins have been bitten by penalties this year. They came in 26 in the league at 8.2 a game, so this is not something new today. It's their seventh penalty already today. Consider one of them, a holding penalty, really allowed Dallas to score a touchdown. Remember, they were going three and out, back by their own goal line, ended up going 93 yards for a score. Now they're going to come near side to Miller, the running back, and a stiff arm, and he's going to pick up two. Tell you Byron Jones, I can't be more impressed. It's hard to play defensive back as a rookie in this league. And Rod Marinelli says, I wouldn't ask it of a veteran, but he comes in as a rookie out of necessity, injuries, and just his versatility. Again, he's played free safety, strong safety, corner, nickel. He's done it all, and he's done it all at a high level. Yes, he got beat at the end of that first half, but Byron Jones is an extraordinary for the Dallas Cowboys this season. Best Big without Morris Claiborne, their starting corner out of hamstring today. Second 30. And Hill stands in another flag. He's got a completion over the middle. It's Deion Sims, backup tight end. And so sorted out yet another penalty. Offside. Defense, number 76, lined up in your neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Well, that'll help. Talked about Byron Jones, John, and, and, and what he's brought to the table, this rookie first-round pick. At the combine, he set a world record. Look at that jump. <laughs> it's a world record, 12 feet, 3 inches. I mean, what is that? <laughs> it's incredible. It's not, not normal. And he's an athlete. But then they all talk about his smarts, mm -hmm. his aptitude, not only on the football field, off the football field. They've got themselves a big-time player. Pressure coming. Here's a Jai, the rookie, who makes the catch and turns around and gets upfield. And they'll mark him out of bounds. Now you're going to look at a third down and long. They could put him at the 4-6. You know, that's what penalties do to you because they had established a rhythm. And, and yeah. like I said, I thought that Tannehill had woken up and he came out firing. Yeah, that's nice rhythm. They're going with the tempo. Then the penalties drove them backwards and kind of took away that rhythm and that momentum that they had. Yeah, they got to get to the 32. They got a long way to go here. Tannehill just gets it out to Landry. And he's got four Cowboy defense there. Nowhere near a first down. Out to the 45. And it'll be punting territory. Just too many penalties on the drive. Now, Kevin, this is what they call the picket fence defense. They line up as if they're fence posts. They're going to have eyes on the quarterback. So you can get a little. You're not getting a lot. And they rally to the football. That's well played and executed defense. So John noted, promising start, but then the penalties derail that drive, and they will punt it away. There's Beasley, fair catch just inside the 10, and that's where Dallas will take over. A little help from the penalties, but the defense doing their job. Cowboys 
Up by Smith here in the third. 14-7 Cowboys over the Dolphins. 8.40 to go in this third quarter. Listen, rain has gone away for the day. And so Dallas has the football. Just inside on 10 yard line. Pitch out here, McFadden. Not much. Well, if the devil decided to quit, where do you think he would go? That's a rhetorical question. Well, Los Angeles, of course. That's what happens in the new box show, Lucifer. He gives Ben a good name. Lucifer is coming in January to Fox. He's in Los Angeles, and that's where the Fox studios are, John. So, in case you're wondering, just filling that in for you. He's very uplifting. <laughs> Second down <laughs> Romo in the gun. Back to throw the middle. Incomplete in for Jason Witten and just couldn't find him there. So Witten with one catch today. Seven away from 1,000 for his career, which will be his work. But this is history. This is his 197th consecutive game played. The most in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. Think about that. Both greats they've had in this organization. A record by Bob Lilly. Production, consistency, durability. Jason, the epitome of all of those, and Tony Rowe called him the best player I've ever played with. Play clock at two. Third down. Pressure. Rowe oh, gets rid of it in time. McFadden has, but he's going to be short of a first down. The pressure again. The Dolphins have had that the last quarter and a half, and Dallas will have to punt. I got to tell you, the offensive line. I think the of them, but they're getting beat right now by this Miami Dolphins front, and they're starting to wear on them. Dominic Sue, Olivier Vernon, Shelby in the middle. They're around Romo. He feels their presence. They're hitting them at the end plays. They're starting to take over this game. So Jones will put away. End over end. High and short. Landry's going to let it bounce. Takes a good Cowboys roll. We got a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Is new. So before we can move on, let's see what the latest penalty is. Holding number 15, the kicking team. That 10 yard penalty will be added into the play. First down. So the Dolphins will have good field position. Look at the middle of your screen there. There's a hold right there. Dolphins football down seven. Today's game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. First and ten of 42. Well, the Dolphins have football down 14 to seven here midway through the third quarter. And his defense has been picking up some steam. Now can the offense join him. A Jai. The rookie with a hard run up the middle. Five yards on that first down. Just to point out on the scoreboard, Carolina was once a 14 all game, is waxing Washington 38 to 14. They're going to be 10 and 0. John. The job Ron Rivera has done up there in Carolina, and Cam Newton, you can't say enough about the way he's playing and leading that team. Tannehill is coming to a tie. He makes a catch. Good block. First down for Miami, and then some inside the 35. Great block from Jarvis Landry. I'm telling you, you go back to the end of that half. The Cowboys score. It looks like all the momentum. The game has changed since that taunting penalty. Since that taunting penalty, we've had a different game. Great block by Landry. Ajaye showing that burst that he shows. But this game has changed since that penalty. The ensuing short kickoff put points on the board for the Dolphins. And that... Again, the inability to fish for these Dallas Cowboys has been the issue. Tony Romo can't fix that alone. Give it to Ajayi again. Good move. Ajayi inside the 30. Let's check on the sidelines with Peter Schrager. Hey, what John's talking about exactly right. Jason Garrett said going into halftime, we have to finish now. We've been in this position. Let's finish the game and actually win one and wrap it up. Meanwhile, Dan Campbell said, it's okay to hit Tony Romo. you got to come in there. If you don't sack him, it's all right. Still hit him. He's injured. Let's get to him and keep the pressure on. 
Well, they are, John, and they're doing it with a four-man rush. This guy got the. This guy's got the memo. They're all over Tony Romo right about now, and the offense now continuing the rhythm that they started to develop at the end of the half. Second and seven. Tannehill lets it loose, picks it up, and just throws it away. So heads up for Tannehill to escape a disaster. Let's get a game break now. Check in with Mike Hill. You guys talked about Carolina making it a perfect 10. That's because Cam is just dabbing on them folks. His fifth touchdown pass of the game that ties a team record. All Panthers just went 38-14 over the skins. Kevin, John, back to you. Uh, they're a machine right now. And they're going to get right now. There's teams where it's home field in the NFC. Wow. It's a bad snap penalty. Tannehill did a really nice job. Throw away. But now a third down and seven. Another third and long. Coming near side, he's got Stoles, he's got it! Touchdown! Ryan Tannehill, just the other day when we met with him, said, Keith Stills is developing, he is our threat. And Kenny Stills shows you exactly what Ronnie, Ryan Tannehill feels that way. Perfectly thrown football, decent coverage, but Stills gets the separation. Tannehill delivers. Second touchdown of the year for Stills, 29 yards. And Tannehill gets some big plays now. The 47-yarder to Landry, that time a 29-yarder, and now an extra point try by Andrew Franks, which would tie it up. And we are tied. Said it on that penalty near the end of the first half against Dallas changed everything. Tannehill fired up. We're all tied up in Miami. The Dolphins go deep to Kenny Stills. A perfect throw from Ryan Tannehill. I mean, you couldn't listen any better because Byron Jones had pretty good coverage. And we're tied. And the Cowboys had a 14 0 lead just over a minute to go in the first half. And things have changed now uh, after the penalty on Des Bryant the taunting penalty walking off the field after that touchdown and now you got a brand new ball game Sun's out in South Florida rain has gone away and it's 15 all for this Cowboys team who've lost seven straight getting their quarterback back today but that hadn't solved all their ways way out of the end zone on the kick from Franks Thanksgiving weekend, we have got some of the best rivalries in college football, including the game of the week on Saturday. Notre Dame take on Stanford, a must-win game for both teams' play chances. It all starts Thursday on FS1. Boy, that game by McCaffrey last night was crazy for the Cardinals. Unbelievable player. Played with his dad at Stanford. I was a quarterback, he was a receiver, but boy, this Christian McCaffrey, he's phenomenal. I think she's getting more consideration than he is for the Heisman. Fun player to watch. There is Soup. First down. Romo has time this time. Going far side. Diving catch. And a good grab by Des Bryant. Third catch of the day for Des. Well, Brent Grimes has done a very nice job keeping Des Bryant bottled up. And those type of throws won't beat you. They got to do those consistently down the field. Keeping him bottled up is what Lou Narumo talked about, and that means keeping him in front of you. You're talking about Grimes. He's been with Brian all over the field today. And has done a nice job. He's also picked off Tony Romo. Second now, they're going to run it. McFadden. And his forward progress should be enough for a first down. And this is where it's so nice having Tony Romo because now momentum has shifted. You face some adversity. Now you rely on your Pro Bowl quarterback. Keep things poised. He's been here before and he knows how to respond. We'll see if he can get it done. Romo said something interesting yesterday. He said, I think we have to find out a little bit of who we are. Talking about the run game, the offense, the team as a whole. One thing's for sure, they're playing hard. That's not the issue. Like 
clock down to one. Roll over the throw it. And McFadden's on his knee after a block, but gets up. Stiff arm and an, a decent game when there was nothing there. I'd like to welcome those of you who are watching Carolina blow out Washington. Here's a recap of what's gone on here in Miami. Well, first of all, a defensive touchdown. Rolando McClain picked it off and ran it home. Start. And then Romo finding Terrence Williams. That got the Cowboys out to a 14-0 lead. But the offense just before the half put together a late drive. Jordan Cameron with a touchdown. And then this moment's ago. Going deep to Kenny Stills. And that touchdown ties it up at 14. That's where we stand. Peter Schrager on the sidelines along with John Lynch on Ken Burka. And away we go. Robert Urban now. He's giving this team a spark here today. And a good run on first down. So we welcome those of you who just joined us. He's John, I'm Kevin. Uh, yeah, Tony Romo is back and things are better, but Cowboys Hill, the critical plays, is what's dogged him during the semi losing streak. Yeah, it is, you know, and I think something very prophetic that's playing out in this game. Remember Tony Romo when we met with him said, if we block him up front, I'll take our chances. If not, it's going to be a real close game. Yeah. Here we are 14-14, and Indomin Sue and company starting to impose their will all over Tony Romo of late. So first and ten after that run by Turley. Fake. A lot of time. Now Romo gets drilled as he throws. Williams got the thing. Did he haul it in? He did. He is so good at that sideline catch when he just made another terrific play. It's a game 15. Boy, there's something about Tony Romo that brings out the bats. Watch this rock. Little stutter. He's going to hit it. Then he sees Tony Romo with nothing. He breaks out of his comeback and watch. The toe tap. I mean, unbelievable. Dan Campbell said he wanted Tony Romo hit. Olivia Vernon says, yes, sir. Terrence Williams, John, had 16 catches the last seven games combined with Romo today. Four of 79 and a touchdown. Big pull. McFadden off to races. McFadden taken down right around the 10. He had a Sprinted through it for 35 yards. Well, the offensive line, watch Lyle Collins. He's going to make the key block. Watch him come around, put the seal right there. And then Darren McFadden turns on the Jets for the big game. McFadden up to 89 yards after that 35 yard rush. And now a first and goal for Dallas. Run to about the middle. Good run. And late penalty again. This one in the backfield. Turbin has been quite the spark. Oh, number 70 offense. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. That's that matchup we talked about early in this game. Zach Martin working against Ndamuk and Sue. Here they are. There. And watch Sue. I frankly don't see it right there. I think that's a bad ball. Yeah. Hands are inside. He's got jersey, but when hands are inside, that's typically within the framework of the rules. I don't like that call. Meanwhile, Tubin remains in the game. And it's still a first and goal. They're backed up at the 19. Romo. Pressure coming from Vernon again. Get away. Now Vernon gives chase and they finally bring him down. Well that could have been a sack and Romo turned it into a four-yard game. Just watch the effort of this. Fight. This is the way they've been playing a, a, a late. Look at the Dominic and Sue continue to play. Vernon chasing and Dominic and Sue back involved. It's hard for big men to do. It's not natural but they've been playing with tremendous effort here the last couple of weeks and it's showing. McFadden back in the game at tell eighth play of the drive. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. Good one in Miami. Cowboys knocking on the doorstep. Tied at 14 with the Dolphins. 14 all. We start the fourth quarter from Miami. And the Cowboys have a second and goal. They're backed up at the 16 thanks to a holding penalty. On a day that honoring our military here in Miami. 
And it's been sloppy at times, but it's been a good football game. And so here we go. Des Bryant in the slot. We got Devin Street outside in this formation. It's Bryant. Second and goal. Romo lost against Bryant. Touchdown. Talked about Tony Romo. He's been here before. He's not going to panic because momentum has shifted. The great ones, what they do, they answer. And that's exactly what Tony Romo, Des Bryant, going to work behind the linebacker in front of the safety. And Romo throws it perfectly. That's what the Dallas Cowboys were hoping for. Hoping from their leader, Tony Romo, and he delivers. That's a pretty good answer, John. Eight plays, 80 yards after the Dolphins just tie it up. And they got caught, as you said, with Hugh, the linebacker on that matchup. Extra point. Up and good. And the Cowboys back in front. Romo to Bryant. That's a familiar connection. And it puts the Cowboys in the Take a look at Tony Romo. How about this? They just asked Aikman and Irvin for the touchdown combination, quarterback to wide receiver in Cowboys history. 50th time they put some legendary Cowboy records going down today, huh? Pick up the ball. What is going on there? What was that? They have. My goodness, they have Jarvis Landry down there, and the ball takes a backward bounce. It has that spin, and Jarvis Landry, you got to pick up ball and go. You should field it in the air and just say, okay, we're going to call it a touchback. He's back there because Damian Williams had trouble bringing one in last week versus the Philadelphia Eagles. What a humongous mistake. Instead of being at the 20, here's Miami at their own four. And that's... Darren Pizzi, who is the assist head coach and the special teams coach, and he's a good one, and I'm sure flabbergasted two weeks in a row. They have let a giant mistake happen. Darren Rizzi, excuse me. So the Dolphins down seven and now on their own four, and they're trying to get a little offense going. And Miller met with Sean Lee. Last week they played where Damian Williams couldn't decide whether to come out of the end or not, and then did and slipped and fell down one, and then and then they have that. They're just decision. -making. There's Williams. Really interesting that on that last drive, Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator and play caller for the Dallas Cowboys, he went back to the run. He got them going with the run game, and then Romo beat up the pass. We'll see what Bill Lazor, the offensive coordinator for the Dolphins, does. It's a Miller. Not much. It may be two on that, and now a third down is coming up for Miami. And they have, well, they've struggled all year on this down, and today they're just one of seven. Yeah, really interesting. They run it twice. And I asked Dan Campbell flat out the other day, look, I you've given him the contract. You think Ryan Tannehill's the guy. Can't even do it. He said, Ryan Tannehill can win a championship, provided you do things efficiently in the run game to help him. He's the guy who's going to go throw 40, 50 times and lead his team, put it on the back. He's not Dan Marino. They got a six-year, $95 million deal. Third and four. Tannehill, design run, and he makes a move, and he's got it. And now three flags come flying on the play. They got Jason Fox on a hold, and that's a good call <laughs> because he, he hooked him. Holding number 74 offense. Half the distance of the goal. Still third down. There it is. And he gets <laughs> he got his money's worth. If you're gonna hold, really hold him. And three flags came his way as a result. He had the first down there as well. I, I didn't think he had to do that. I thought Tannehill could have beat him to the punch, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I get it, you're in the moment, but though so that penalty negates a first down run. Try third down again. And they've had third and longs all day. Again, one of seven on third. Third 
down and nine. Four man rush. Tannehill gets hit as he delivers. Incomplete. Greg Hardy came in with the pressure, and now Miami punts from their own end zone. Well, Greg Hardy shot out of a can at the end of that rush. Credit him. Putting the pressure in Tannehill's face. And that causes Aaron throw. So now the Cowboys send Lucky Whitehead back to return. Matt Dar's got to be careful back of the end zone here. Here's what it looks like to be a punter. They had some time. They set up the return. It's a short kick. And Whitehead's going to pick it up and come around the edge. And he makes a great decision, does Lucky Whitehead. Inside the 40, they will mark him out of bounds at 37. And now late flags and extracurricular activity. I think it was the punter that got involved here. And yeah, they called him for a personal foul, I think, for the late hit. At the end of this, he's clearly out of bounds. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, that looked like the British Bulldog back in the old <laughs> WWF. Oh. I mean, talk about decision making, though. I mean, first Landry lets the kickoff sit there at the one, and then there's no reason to do that. The momentum has shifted in this game so many times back and forth. The foul and necessary reports. Number four on the kick team. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. She get Jeff Nelson, our stat man, on this. How many personal fouls on punters happen in the NFL? I don't remember one. You ever seen that? <laughs> I think I did. Fouad Rivez, the old uh, Minnesota Vikings punter. I believe Fouad got one to get the game with. But my goodness. We'll take a commercial. So they got some pressure from Greg Hardy, and now it's Tony Romo getting the ball back, already up by seven. Meanwhile, the Dolphins try not to let it slip away. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Xbox One, the official game console of the NFL. By Target, expect more, pay less. And by Miller Lite, back in its original bottle, but not for long, it's Miller Time. Beach, so that always looks good. It's been an interesting day here of football. 21 14 Cowboys, and now after a defensive stand and a penalty on the punter, yeah, he me. Great field position. Here's Robert Urban running left, and he's struck out by Olivier Vernon. He's played a whale of a game today. This defensive front for the Miami Dolphins continues to play well. Playing with tremendous effort, Olivier Vernon and Dama Kinsuro Mitchell. And Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, continues to stay with the run. And Tony Romo capped the last drive with the touchdown, Des Bryant, but it was set up by a lot of successful running by the Cowboys. Sure was. Lost four on that last run, though. And Turbin remains in there in the backfield. Quick hitter and a quick tackle. Shepard made the catch. Shepard on the tackle. And it's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Third and long. Look at Sue under 12 minutes to go. And it's a big play here on this third down. Get to the 11. Romo, good time coming to Old Reliable. Jason Witten with the conversion of first down. Tony Romo talked about it this week. His favorite route with Jason Witten. They call it Y option. And that basically means Romo or Witten's going to come up here and then do whatever the heck he wants the open spot he pivots away from the leverage of the defender and Tony Romo that's what you talk about chemistry they know the subtleties they know the body language of each other so well that's a true option it's something they do better than anybody in this league and the first and goal 
They give it to Turbin. Quick cut up the middle, and Turbin rumbles forward to pick up a couple. So Witten now six catches away from 1,000. There's Scott Lenahan, offensive coordinator for this Cowboys team. And just the Witten thing, you say, okay, 1,000 catches, what does that mean? There's 10 people in the history of the league that are in that club. Enough said. So. <laughs> First time out for either team in this second half. So Witten, we mentioned trying to get into that 1,000 reception club. And only 10 people in the history league are in it. And he's looking to join it. Hines Ward has an even 1,000 former Steeler. And uh, well, John, this is a group of some Hall of Fame involved. I mean, look at that. Jerry Rice, Tony Gonzalez, Marvin Harrison. I mean, incredible stuff. and. For Jason Witten to put himself in that category, tremendous. And then today, the 197th consecutive game, a new Cowboys record surpassing Mr. Cowboy, Bob Lilly. We showed you highlights of Super Bowl VI earlier. He had that 29-yard sack that game with Bob Greasy, one of his signature plays. So yeah, Witten all the time, a Hall of Famer. At least you would think. Second and goal. We have Romo for Witten here. Back to throw. This time he's got time. Time. Coming back to Beasley in and out of the hands. Just couldn't hold on. Bryce McCain was on the coverage, but he should have had it. I think Tony Romo does, and the Dolphins were very cognizant. The ability to buy time extending the plays and then delivering. Tony Romo, brilliant in that pocket. Watch him just extending the play, backing up a couple steps, eyes downfield, and he delivers it. Cole Beasley got to catch that ball. Great play by Romo. Beasley's got pretty good hands. Just couldn't hang on. That's the smart play by Romo right there. Don't force anything. You're already up by seven. Now you put the field goal. You make it a two-score game. A prudent decision by Romo. Nothing clearly there. Hold on to the football and take care of yourself. Took a pretty good grip to drag him down by the jersey. By Shelby. That's his second sack of the year. Had a sack last week against Philly. So now Dan Bailey trying to make it a two-possession game. This would be a 30-yard field goal. True. And so the Cowboys up by 10 from Miami. Bailey with some insurance. 9.09 to go. Jennings in the NFC East right now. Giants are on a bye. The Redskins are getting crushed in Carolina. And the Eagles are getting smoked at home by Tampa Bay. Thank you, John. Four and six. Six needs to be a little smaller, but well done. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's crazy because you look at Dallas, they're two and seven. Only the Browns have a worse record in the National Football League, but yet, they've, all they've been, we've been in the last two weeks, all they've been is positive, upbeat, feeling that they can do this. And, and yet, you know, here they are, they win today, well, a couple of out of first place, and they've been here before. Their fourth quarters have been the undoing of this team. They've had the leader that have been tied six of the last seven games, all losses, outscored 73 to 30 in those fourth quarters and overtimes combined. The defense hasn't come away. No sacks, just one takeaway. And then the quarterbacks haven't performed. Obviously, rolls back today, who just happened to be the second best fourth quarter quarter rate-wise of all time.
time. Three for four, 31 yards in the fourth quarter today is Romo. By the way, Cowboys up now by 10. Here's Tannehill looking to get it back, and that's a good start as he comes over the middle and finds Stills, who's got the catch. That's good for a Miami first down. Kevin, I'm often asked, you know, people say, a guy like Tony Romo, come on, he really makes the defense better? Why? Well, when you're up by 10 points in the fourth quarter, in large part because of Tony Romo, all of a sudden it becomes a little easy to get a takeaway because the other team has to push the ball down the field. So it does affect the entire team when you have a special quarterback. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And Tony Romo is showing that today. Tannehill looking to run up the middle. Game break time. We'll check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, Jameis Winston is having himself a day. Five touchdown passes, including from the Cameron break. Ties the record for rookie in game, and he's still got almost a quarter to go. Bucks rolling in Philly, 38-14. Kevin, John, and Peter. Tampa Bay's right in the playoff race. How about that? They sure are. They're going to be 5-5 five and five if they win this today. Second and six for Miami. We'll also trying to get to 5-5, five and five, but they've got work to do. Against these 2-7 and seven Cowboys. A lot on the line, next eight minutes or so. Here's Tannehill. Pressure! Down he goes! Jack Hufford came flying in and brought down Tannehill. And you talk about wanting to push it down the field. That's a coverage sack. Great coverage down the field. Ryan Tannehill, you got to get rid of the ball. That's decent protection by your front. But when you're holding it that long, in large part because of the coverage, See Barry Church all over George Cameron. Jarvis Landry covered up. Good coverage by that secondary. It led to the late sack by Crawford. Yeah, Crawford, they just moved him to defensive tackle last year. He was hurt first year. They may have something. He's got four sacks now. Third down and long. Hold the middle is Tannehill. And that's Miller. And that's going to be short of a first. And with seven minutes left and all three timeouts down 10, what's called here from Dan Campbell? The call is punt. Well, you know, I get that throw if you're thinking four down territory because you get a large chunk to uh -huh. set up the fourth down. But if that's not the thought process, you got to push it now. It's tough. Easier said than done. The, the Cowboys again employing that pick fist defense. So, Dolphins will punt away. Big sack by Jack Crawford there. Good kick. Fair catch easily. He makes it out of the 13. 629 to go. Cowboys football. Cowboys lead up by 10. Tony Robo trying to end the seven-game Cowboys losing streak. Today's game is sponsored T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. Well, this is only the beginning of the action. America's game of the week. It's a big one. The Packers. And the first place, Minnesota Vikings. Now that'll be a huge game. Here, it's the Cowboys 24, the Dolphins 14. Dolphins would love to have that guy, Cameron Wake, out for the year with an Achilles. Set of sacks in three weeks from him, but he's not available. And so the Cowboys are going to try and run with McFadden, and that is not going to work. Olivier Vernon there again. He's been there all day. And John, let's be fair. McFadden's had a good game, but this is where DeMarco Murray would run it on people's throats. Now look, there's six minutes left in football. This is what you call a four-minute offense. When you want to get in that mode, when you get first downs via the run game, get behind our great offensive line. And you're exactly right. No one was better than DeMarco Murray last year. We'll see if McFadden can get it done. He's had a nice game, 19 carries, 85 yards. Time obviously a factor. Dolphins have all three timeouts left. Well, they can't afford much. McFadden. Running left, flag flies. And Dominican Sue there again, and the flag stops the clock too. Now you said at the beginning it's going to be fun to watch Sue against this offensive line. It's been a good matchup. Holding. Number 70 offense. That penalty's declined. Third down. So that's on Zach Martin. Here's Zach Martin right here in Dominican Sue. And where he's getting him, he's stunning right prior to the play. And they're making it an awful tough. 
for Zach Martin. Zach Martin may have to close those splits down or get more help from his set. Dolphins have to have this if they want to come back and win this game. Third down and 14. They're going to hit it off on a draw to McFadden, who's got some room, and Darren McFadden may have it. He is going to have the first down. A draw works to perfection. Jason Garrett smiling, and I think it's ironic since it's been 14-14. Scott Linehan has really relied on this run game. The Miami front was starting to get really hard to block. They've relied on this run game. Third 14 converting. You see the block by Travis Frick, the offensive lineman. And McFadden doing a nice job of getting that first down. Clutch pickup for the Dallas Cowboys. And he's at 100 yards on the day. Man, was that big. Clock is rolling first down. Give it to him again. And that time he's going to lose yardage. And if you're Mammy, you got to start thinking about timeouts here. And they do. And they take their first. And we'll take one as well. Cowboys trying to suit this one away. Fox Sports proudly supports Folds of Honor and its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who've been killed or saved while serving our country. For more information, please visit foxsportssupports.com. Got to tell you, a chance to go out to Oklahoma on Memorial Day and visit the home base of the Folds of Honor where they built a golf course, the Page Golf Course, just to support that charity. And you meet the families and people that are involved. Wow, tremendous organization. We're proud to support it at Fox. Second and 11 for Dallas, trying to run this game out up by 10. 4.23 to go. Dolphins took their first timeout. They've got two left. Run it again. It's that patiently at the middle, and it puts the head down. It works his way all the way to the 30, picks up seven. You watch this matchup again. Watch those guys, Sue and Martin. <laughs> Just two brutally strong guys. And Tomek and Sue had about enough of Zach Martin. You're going to dump him at the end of this play. All right, so the Dolphins call their second timeout. John, here's the thing about Dallas. They, they said only Cleveland Browns had a worse record in the NFL coming into today. Quarterback's back. Defense has played better. If they win today, they're only two games out of first place because the NFC been so up and down well and, and it all comes down to finishing we talked about it Jason Garrett had said we've been in every game hopefully our Pro Bowl quarterback is that difference I think he has been he makes everybody around him better and he knows how to make the big play and that's been the difference here today the offensive line playing better but they run it better because there's not so many people in the box because of the threat of throwing with Tony Romo well this is a huge down Dolphins one time I left third and four Beasley's got it, looking for a block. First down, Cole Beasley. Two beautifully executed plays on third down, and the clock continues to run his first catch of the day. Well, and I think the adjustment by Scott Linehan, it's a lot of run, and then when we do throw it, let's have it be a quick throw. We're having trouble blocking these guys, and so what do you do? You pop it to Cole Beasley. Great block by Des Bryant. Tyron Smith getting out there in front. It's just smart football, and Scott Linehan really called a smart game in this second half. Tony Romo tells him right there, points to Linehan. Great call, coach. And another first down. Defense have the two-minute warning and one more timeout. That's all they can do. And there is McFedden. That's another first down. He picks up 11. That style of football just wears on people. And the four-yard runs, the two-yard runs, they start becoming ten-yard runs when you've worn them out. And that's what this Cowboys line. Look at the surge. See Lyle calls with the block. And McFadden, when he has a little space, can do a lot of damage. I know they're running the ball now. But does Romo just everything about this? The machinations of the offense. You see they're wearing them out play-wise, but just his presence in there, does that help the situation at all? No doubt about it. I mean, here's McFadden again. Keep going back to it. They're running down. 
Another 10 yard run. Now you've got everyone in the box because they have to stop them on the run and this offensive line has worn out the Dolphins front. Remember this is a Dolphin defense that played 88 plays in Philadelphia last week. Dan Campbell tried to take them out of pads, everything he could do to keep them fresh, but I think you're starting to see the wear and tear of a defense who's played 88 plays last week, now 65 plays this week. That's a lot of plays in football. Yeah, it sure is. Meanwhile, Darren McFadden, 25 carry, 127 yards. And I think Dallas may call a timeout here. They will. So they'll stop clock. Dolphins will have the two-minute warning and one more timeout. The most fierce voice in sports is on FS1. The one and only Con Cowherd is bold, unique, and outspoken. And you can see him on the herd every weekday at noon Eastern and only on FS1. Well, we're talking about the Cowboys, John. But what about these Dolphins? Four and five. We know they've been better under Dan Campbell. Three and two since he took over. And we said at the beginning, two things they've done. They've gotten to the quarterback, which they have continued to do today. And they've run the football, which they have not done today. No, they haven't. They got away from it. And I think the play discrepancy. They haven't been able to maintain possessions. When they've started to get rhythm, they seem to have shot themselves in the foot by going backwards with penalties and such. Just a little disjointed game and sloppy with the penalties that were for both teams today. First down and ten. Last play of the two-minute warning. They'll run it again with McFadden earning his paycheck today. Pushing the pile forward for two yards. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. Cowboys trying to stop this seven-game streak. Up ten on the Dolphins in Miami trying to run this thing out. Congratulations, Dallas. You're going to end the losing streak at 7. You've got the 10-0 Panthers on Thanksgiving. Wow. So let me ask you, John Lynch, can they do it? I, I, we just said, hey, they're still close in this division. Can they make this run with a relatively tough schedule now that we're almost back? Well, you see them in their four-minute offense, and I'll answer after this All right, the best eight. I can. They're trying to run this game out. One timeout for the Dolphins. That's all they can do to stop it. Run it again, McDadden, and Sue eats him up. Third down coming. What do you think? I think they can. I, I really do. I think they have a monumental task beating the Carolina Panthers. But they have him at home. They have Tony Romo back. And I think we've seen a great illustration on what he brings to this team. He makes everyone better. And there's a confidence that comes with having that guy at the quarterback position. It hasn't been perfect. You see the interception early. There was some rust to shake off for Tony Romo. But you saw this, the big plays down the field, the explosive nature. You saw mistakes throughout the course of the game, but that was to be expected. But then you keep seeing that, and that's what he brings to this team. And I think he can be the difference. Now, like I said, it's a monumental task, and the only way you can do it, keep knocking people off, because there is no margin for error. No doubt. And again, Washington getting beat up by Carolina. They're going to go 10-0. The Eagles getting thrown at home by Tampa Bay. Josh are off, so it's... Good day for the Cowboys if they could just finish this one out. And McFadden having a big game. Not his best this year. He had 152 yards earlier this year, but he's been very, very good. Especially on this last drive when they needed him the most. Third down, nowhere to go. Those of you just tuning in, welcome to Miami. Cowboys trying to put off their seven-game losing streak. Up by 10, minute 37 to go. Along with Peter Schrager and John Lynch on Kevin Burkhardt. Today's game being produced by Pete Jessica, directed by Artie Kemner, the associate director. His new father, Eric Mandia, with lovely daughter Olivia and mom Lindsay at home. Broadcast associate Tyler Dare, our technical director, Clyde Taylor. Technical producer, Clyde, I'm sorry, and the TD is Tom Maslak. As a fourth and six, and the Cowboys will ball a timeout of the play clock about to run down and coming up next on America's Game of the Week it's a it's a doozy the Packers who are all of a sudden reeling against the first place Minnesota Vikings and they've gotten better and better and the thing is when we saw Minnesota early in the year I know you thought that their defense was good 
but they've turned into a tremendous defense top five in the league they got big time players harrison smith is a guy i love at the safety position anthony barr uh everson griffin a lot of good players and zimmer has been brilliant in leading them they play aggressive and then teddy bridgewater's been good enough with adrian peterson behind him at the running back position that helps uh, peterson too and he's been great So fourth down and six at this point. You're up ten. You don't have a field goal blocked. So you're just going to try and run it. Take some more time off. Maybe get a first down. Fourth and six. McFadden. And we get a West play is dead. Nineteenth penalty of the day is coming. It's been ugly at times. Fault start. Number 68 offense. It's a five yard penalty. It'll still be fourth down. It's Doug Free. The right tackle. Not making excuses, but just the reality with a new quarterback, different counts. Romo may hold it longer than the guys that have been on, and we've seen a lot of pre snap penalties for the Cowboys, and that possibly explains some of that, but it's still unacceptable. State Farm Game Break Show will bridge the gap between our game and the Vikings and Packers. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. Scores and highlights, and they'll take you up to America's Game of the Week. Go, 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 go. Indianapolis, take him all the way back. Matt Hastert, about to be 3 0 as a Colts star. The Falcons are reeling, and on this fourth down play, they will go nowhere. The Dolphins will take over. With a minute four to go, down by 10. They need a miracle at this point. <laughs> Rose telling them, he's pushing the defense now. He's saying, stay back, keep it in front of you. They need two scores. Tony Romo doing everything. And that's what leaders do. John, I know there's a way to go here to evaluate. But if you're the Dolphins evaluating Dan Campbell, how would you do it? Well, I think he's definitely provided a spark and, and lifted this team I think there's still some ta a talent gap that yeah. needs to happen and you got to make up some of that and that's going to happen in the offseason for the Miami Dolphins meanwhile Tannehill gets buried already was there first and then he got some help from his friends David Irving and company too and you have to say there were a lot of turning points in this game after Miami he came back with the stills touchdown a tie to four and you felt they had all the momentum on their side. That's when I think Tony Romo really took over because after that, led them on an eight-play, 80-yard drive with a touchdown. And the Cowboys haven't looked back since that point. Near south to convert the tight end, George Cameron, incomplete well, with 27 was, to go. Excuse me, Kevin, but it was, I think, very patient of Jason Garrett and Scott Linehan as well as Tony Romo, it could be easy to say, we got our quarterback, we got to throw it every down. Instead, they relied on Darren McFadden's offensive line and then finished the drive with Tony Romo to Des Bryant, but it was set up in large part by the running game, and they did very effectively. They also had a couple gaps. Jarvis Landry just let a kickoff bounce at the three, and they started there, and then they had a, a personal foul on the putter, <laughs> which led to the last field goal. Dan Hill is going to let it fly. We'll dancing around by Landry just goes down. Time is ticking away. They can't stop the clock here. This one, this one is over from Miami. And the Cowboys are going to end their seven-game losing streak. And hang on, there's an injured player. And it's Byron Jones. That's a guy they can ill afford to lose. Remember the quick turnaround, Morris Claiborne, Claiborne already out with the ankle injury. Byron Jones filling in, so hopefully for Dallas fans, Byron Jones is all right. So they look at Jones. And we hope that he's okay. With nine seconds to go now, they care for Jones. Cowboy is about to wrap it up. Well, they put a couple seconds on the game clock. Uh, obviously, this one is over, but now concerned for Byron Jones. The outstanding rookie for the Cowboys. Who, I guess looking to get his ankle 
rolled on that last pin. Already with Morris Clay now with a hamstring injury, and they got to play on Thanksgiving in four days. That's something to watch for Dallas. Tannehill back, and good night. Dropped again. Back-to-back -back plays that he has set. And that time it's Demarcus Lawrence, and that will do it. Tony Romo back, and so are the wins for the Dallas Cowboys today. Cowboys get the victory here in Miami to stop their seven-game losing streak. For Peter Schrager and John Lynch, I'm Ken Burkhardt. Now to Kurt and the guys back in L.A. We'll see you.